Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb. This is our studio where we do co-working and we work on all sorts of stuff. And one of those things that we work on is our website, adjuma.com. We should work some more in adjuma.com, but the videos have been coming out relatively, uh, relatively consistent. And if you are enjoying our videos, please do subscribe to our YouTube page. Hit that subscribe button, click on the notification bell, and give the video a like if you like what you see or a dislike. We just want to, we just want to know what you guys think, so that we can, you know, make some adjustments and uh, give you the content that you guys want to see. Uh, but more important, the ones that we want to make. So, all right. Uh, on that note, I wanted to talk a bit about Jordan One mids because there was a little bit of discussion online in the Facebook groups, and you know, there were these guys who had gone online and said some stuff about Jordan One mids. And we had recently unboxed some Jordan 1 mids and I said that we were gonna do an in-depth review. So I thought, what better time than now to talk about those sneakers. This is a box of the Jordan 1 mid SE Black Track Red Dash Black Dash Igloo, otherwise known as the Union mids, right? So we'll open up the box, open up the paper, and there's no sneakers inside because I've been wearing them. Here are the sneakers here. These are the Air Jordan 1 Mid in the track red and black and igloo colorway. So I'm just gonna grab one shoe and we'll talk about this one shoe so that you guys can see it. In detail, let's go over the features of the shoe. It is in the shape of the Jordan 1, meaning it has that encapsulated air unit inside of the midsole. It is a solid rubber midsole. Great traction on the underside with that iconic uh, Air Jordan 1 traction, which we also see on SB Dunks, which came out a year later. In the toe box of this particular mid, you have kind of this nylon material which is you know, a less than premium material. And I should say that in general, this sneaker is not made of premium materials. And that kind of accounts for the different price point of that around 5,000, that around 5,000 peso range uh, versus the Air Jordan you know, highs, which are in the eight to 10,000 peso range. So you have this nylon over here and then this synthetic, it feels like, leather that goes all over the toe box and along the medial and lateral side panels. Then you have some very nice suede that runs around the collar and here on the heel section. Nice nappy suede and you can see how much I've been wearing it. You're already getting some marks over here on the collar. Kind of the main difference between mids is of course the height and I brought along a pair of Air Jordan 1 high OGs. Are these high OGs or are they just highs? Retro High OGs, and this is in the Tokyo, what was it? Tokyo Biohack colorway. I was gonna say Tokyo Cyberpunk, but you can see right off the bat the height difference between these two sneakers. I should put them heel to heel, I guess. There you go. Heel to heel, you can see that there is a significant difference in the height. Basically, the height of the collar on the mid is about the same height as the wing panel on the high OG, on the retro high OG. But you know, the the outsole, the cup sole is exactly the same. There is no difference. But of course the materials are different. That's why I wanted to bring this particular pair in because the materials on this one are super plush. Although we don't get this nice nappy suede on, uh, on the Tokyo Biohack. The other difference is that there's one less hole on the Jordan 1 mid. Uh, you can see here, on the biohack that the eye stay goes all the way to the top and on the mid it stops behind this wing panel. Here on the Retro High OG you have an extra, an extra uh, hole for lacing here and on the mid it's just not there at all. And that means that it's gonna be a shorter shoe by about that much. So the question is how come when there's this little difference between the sneakers the price is so different, right? This one is in that um, 8,900 to, 8, to 10,011, depends on the pair uh, at retail. And then this one is selling for about 5,000 pesos at retail. That really does come down to materials. If you ask me, uh, the, the leather on this is very much a synthetic leather. Whereas on this one, it's a very plush, nice, uh, 
proper leather, I guess you could say, or genuine leather. Uh, the, the suede's on this are very nice. It's more of a new buck actually when you see it side by side with this nappy suede. Ultimately, that's really it. That's really the only major difference is the quality of materials that are used. Now, as much as I love the Retro High OG and it is a great sneaker, it is a good silhouette, I, I gotta say, I actually wear these more often. You know, mids, because of the shape, are a little bit easier to wear. And as an everyday shoe, you know, you want something that can be stylish, but it's also a bit of a beater. You can wear them all the time. And one of the things that makes this sneaker very much a beater is that nylon material that runs along the toe box in this sneaker. And the section here where there's this bump, that's where your sneaker is going to crease. Because it's made of nylon, that doesn't really mark so much or it's not so evident when the sneakers are really worn in. So I've been wearing this maybe two to three times a week uh, since I got them in December or late November, I should say. And they're, they're great. I wear them all the time and they're super comfortable as far as Jordan 1s go. Uh, Jordan 1s are not really the most comfortable shoe, but you know, just wearing to the office, wearing to the studio, going to the supermarket, this has been a very trusty shoe to wear. And I do like to wear these. They are a lot of fun, but they are not what I would say are everyday sneakers. And the Jordan 1 Mid is a great option for everyday sneakers. Uh, so yeah, that is the Jordan 1 Mid in the budget union uh, colorway. Now I did want to deep dive a bit, you know, when it comes to the concept of the Mid. And you know, there was this video, and this, this is why we're taping today uh, in particular, uh, because you know, I really threshed out my thoughts about the Mids yesterday because there were these guys who, who went on YouTube and I think they were like resellers and they were just talking all sorts of trash about the mids and, and you know, um, they said some stuff that were, that were true. They said some things that were unsavory maybe, a little bit homophobic and I didn't like those things. Uh, but the thing that I think I didn't like the most were, was when they were saying that the Jordan 1 mid is not for true sneaker heads. I gotta say, like, that really depends on your definition of what a sneakerhead is. Maybe it's not for hype beasts. Maybe it's not for people who are just chasing that particular area of culture. Uh, but for people who love sneakers, man, you will remember when you could not get Jordan 1 highs. You couldn't get retro high OGs. All you could get were mids, and this is like in the 2000s. You couldn't get something that said Nike Air on the tongue. Yeah, this is already a kind of a modified version but you just couldn't get them. Everything was Jumpman Air uh, or even just Jumpman. Even then, we still wanted the sneakers. That desire for a silhouette, you know, it means something to the sneaker head. And that is what makes the story for you. So a sneaker can be great for you without needing to be great for everyone or great for Hypebeast or great for Complex Magazine, right? Uh, or great for resellers. If the sneaker speaks to you, then that's your shoe. Now, I remember there's one particular sneaker that I consider one of my grails and it's the Air, uh, the Warachi the Air Trainer, right? And I remember being, uh, what was that, 1993. So I was only about nine or 10 years old. And when that came out, uh, I was a size four and a lot of my friends, I, I went to an international school, a lot of my friends were were uh, Caucasian, right? Australians and Europeans. And they were size six and I was size four, which meant that they didn't make the Warachi Air Trainer in my size and they didn't make them in their size. So they were all wearing uh, Warachi Air Trainers and I couldn't wear them. On top of that, I was a runner and my parents would really only buy me running shoes. And I only really got that one pair of sneakers a year. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have stories like that. So I never got that sneaker. And a couple of years ago, I saw a friend of mine, uh, Deej Fabian, so shout out to Deej, uh, wearing those sneakers. And it really just ignited this uh, nostalgia in me for that pair. And I've been looking out for it and I want to pick that up one day. There's no hype behind it, but there is story and there is passion. And at the end of the day, that's what being a sneaker head is about a love for sneakers and design and fashion even. And having a personal story that connects you to a sneaker, that's for me really what being a sneaker head 
is all about. And that's why I'm gonna wear a Jordan 1 mid. If you know and understand the silhouette, there is a way to wear it. And uh, I like to think I do that. If you wanna know more, follow along on Instagram. I'm at Kosh on Instagram. Follow at Ajima Mag on Instagram and at Honeycomb Manila, which is this, our studio here in Double Dragon Plaza in Manila. What do you think of the Jordan 1 mid? Am I completely off base? Are they garbage? Are they trash? Do you have any sneaker stories? What is your grill? What is that shoe that nobody cares about, nobody gets, but you wanna get and you don't have yet? I do wanna know your stories. My name is Ko. wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. Peace.